Hi, and welcome to Coding with Jesse. I'm Jesse Skinner, and today I'm going to take a look at Snowpack. Now, I only heard about Snowpack today, but I think it's pretty interesting. Uh, it's a way, it's a new, like, build process, but it's not really a build process. Uh, let's read the TLDR. So with Snowpack, you can build modern web apps, React, Vue, without a bundler. So there's no webpack, there's no rollup. And that means it doesn't have to rebuild the whole site every time you hit save. Instead, every change is reflected in the browser instantly. So what it's doing, it's using ESM modules in the browser, right? Because now you can have a script tag with type equals module. And you can import from a URL, and everything kind of works right in the browser. Uh, now, I haven't tried it at all. So we're going to try it out for the first time today. Uh, so let's walk through kind of what it says. Instead of bundling, you run npm install once. Snowpack will reinstall your dependencies into a new folder, web modules. And then inside your app, you import stuff from web modules. And that's it. So it's kind of like a static website. There's not really a build process at all. Um, and I just want to try it out, see what it's like. So I'm going to go to, I'm not very patient. I'm not going to read all this stuff. We're just going to go to get started. And I'm too impatient for that. So I'm going to scroll down to quick start. And I've already created a folder, empty git repo. Uh, I'm already in there. So let's take a look at that. We're going to do npm init yes. All right, so I'm already in my snowpack demo folder. And I'm just going to run what they say, npm init yes. Now it gives us a package JSON. And the next step is to install some dependencies. Uh, so the tutorial is using Preact and HTM. And I'm just going to follow the tutorial. So we'll see what happens. So I'll just paste that into my terminal. And that'll give me Preact and HTM. Pretty straightforward. It says even if you want to just use React, still start here. Yeah, so even though I, I might not build a site with Preact and HTM today. I'm just going to follow the tutorial anyway. So now run Snowpack to create your web modules directory. And you don't even install S Snowpack. It's telling you to use NPX. If you're not familiar with that, that's a newer uh, command line tool for executing something from NPM. So what it's going to do is download Snowpack. It's going to not install it, but it'll download it and build it if needed and then execute it. So we'll do that. I'll make this a little bigger. MPX snowpack. And here it's downloading it, and downloading it, and downloading it. It's actually pretty fast. Nine seconds, that's not too bad. I don't have to edit that out. And it installed HTML and Preact. So now let's actually look in the web modules. It didn't tell us to do that, but I'm gonna look anyway. So we get HTM. It's a built, it's a bundled file. Let's turn word wrap on and take a look. So it's just a, wow, it's really small. And we have Preact as well, word wrap. Uh, yeah, so it just, I guess it's building the dependencies and creating a single file for each dependency that then we can import directly into the browser. Let's see if that's true. If all went well, Yep, I got the web modules directory. I got those two files. This is the magic of Snowpack. Any NPM package can be transformed from node modules package name to web modules package name.js. That's really cool. I, I like that. And now you can optionally install npm install Snowpack save dev to speed up future Snowpack runs. In other words, it doesn't have to download Snowpack every time with the MPX thing. Um, and run Snowpack inside of your package.json scripts. But you really only have to do that when your dependencies change. So if your only dependencies are Preact and HTM in this case, uh, there's no need to rebuild them. We'll only have to call npm install, uh, we'll only have to run npx Snowpack if we change the version of Preact or install another new library. But for right now, we don't need to, so I'm going to skip that. 
So we need to create an HTML file. I'm going to use the power of copy and paste. And where does it want us to put it? Just in the root directory, I guess? Uh, yeah, probably. So I'm just going to create a new uh, file here, index.html, paste that in. And what's it doing? It's loading source app.js, which doesn't exist yet. I assume that's what this is, yeah. So let's copy that as well. It's just a seems like a hello world for Preact. So we'll make a new folder source and make a new file app.js and paste that in as well. Now let's see how it works. It's importing H and render not from quote Preact as you would do normally, but from slash web module slash preact.js. Same with htm. So these, these import statements are made to work in the browser. These won't work in Node. Uh, this looks like an absolute path on the server, so that it's just not going to work on the server. This is not meant to work on the server. This is meant to work in the browser. These are, these are URLs, not paths, not file system paths. They are URL paths. OK, and then we're going to make whatever it does. It says hello world in the color red. So let's see what how that works. So it says here to use npx servor dash dash reload. I guess that's a simple dev server, it says. So we'll try that out and see what happens. I'll just paste that in here. And you can see it's a startup web server in my demo folder. So I'm going to try visiting that URL, and we'll see what happens. And there we get hello world. And if I view source, it's uh, I guess it's injected some hot reloading stuff, but uh, live reloading. Uh, yeah, but otherwise it's just linking to my code. It hasn't been compiled at all. It's just using import directly. So I guess if we looked at the network tab, we would see uh, that it's actually loading preact.js and htm.js and my app code itself. So that's a really neat approach to development. Let's try making a simple change. I'll, I'll just change hello world to hello everyone. Save that, switch back. It's already there. It's done. That's very cool. So I think Snowpack has a lot of potential. Uh, there's uh, some next steps we could do, but. I'll save that for future videos, maybe, if anyone's interested. Um, I think the approach is really cool, leaning heavily on in-browser ESN modules. Uh, I think that's probably, it could be the future. I don't know. But I think it's pretty neat, at least for simple applications. I'll definitely be checking this out. So yeah, check out Snowpack if you're interested. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.